Okay, guys. Uh, what we're going to do so is topic 28, the electron. So this is fairly theory heavy, bit of maths, uh, and then we move on to the atom, and then finally fusion and fission, and then I'll look at the the um, option question. Okay. So today we're going to focus on this one. All right. So this is just a quick recap of the electron. You can read that in your own time, guys. Top 28. So tomonic emission. Take note of this. This question will come up again later on. What is it? It is the emission of electrons from the surface of a hot metal. Okay. So thermonic emission is the emission of electrons from the surface of a hot metal. We heat up a metal enough that electrons get, the loosest electrons, get enough energy to jump and move across. Okay. It usually happens on the cathode and then jump across to the anode. Okay. Um, that's basically what it says here. You see, right here. if the temperature is raised high enough, some electrons can gain enough energy to escape from the surface of the metal. Okay, so where we use this is in the cathode ray tube. Okay, so for this, uh, you would need to be able to. Last time we got asked, you had to draw roughly it. The key things here, of course, is your heating filament, your cathode, your anode, and the fact that there's a high voltage, and then, of course, your screen over here. Okay, so your heating filament, your cathode, your anode, your high voltage, and your screen. Okay, so what happens is, is that when you heat up the element, okay, all right, this is going to heat up the cathode here. So there's going to be a high negative charge building up here. The anode is therefore going to appear positive and the electrons will jump to across this. And then some electrons will be diverted out to hit the screen. Okay. That's basically what happens here. Okay. So it heats the cathode. The cathode gains electrons. The electrons jump to the anode because the anode now appears positive. Okay. And we have these parallel plates. Okay. And what we do with them, and will discuss in a second, is we can move the electron then. So as the electron is shooting through here, these plates can be done in such a way that you can move the electron up, down. Okay. Left or right even. Okay. Mostly up and down. So what happens? One plate is going to appear positive, one plate is going to appear negative. So obviously the electron will get pulled up towards the positive. Okay? The plates always carried, carry opposite charge. All right? So that's how you could deflect it up or down. All right? Okay. Oh. So what does this lead us to? The energy. Okay? The energy associated with the electron. Okay? Is this equation here. W equals QV, or work done equals charge times voltage. And work done also equals, if you remember from mechanics, force times displacement. Work done is also in joules. So what else does it equal? The work done also equals potential energy, kinetic energy. Okay? So work done equals force times displacement equals joules, which therefore equals potential energy, kinetic energy, which equals QV. That last piece of red would not disappear. Okay? So we then, from this, we get a concept called the electron volt. Okay? So W equals QV, we get the electron volt. Now you can be asked to define the electron volt, and it is given to you here. The electron volt is the energy lost or gained by an electron when it accelerates through a potential difference of one volt. Okay? In other words, W equals QV, the Q is an electron, the V is one volt, okay, so therefore W equals EV, okay, electron volt. So it's the energy lost or gained by an electron when it accelerates through a potential difference of one volt, okay. Therefore, one electron volt, so I'm going to put this out there now, one electron volt, and this will help you convert all these things, is equal to 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Why? Because the charge of an electron is 1.6, 10 to the minus 19, and the energy lost or gained by an electron when it accelerates through potential difference of one volt times one. One volt. And then charge, coulombs, times volts, volts, V, gives us joules. So therefore, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, okay? 
when you're converting these, you will be asked to convert joules to electron volts and electron volts to joules. Okay. And actually, hang on a minute. I think, yeah, I have a question coming up on this. So when we come to that question, I'll run through it with you. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's in the log table is what one electron volt is. So if you're ever asked to convert joules to electron volts or electron volts to joules, go to the page in the log tables where it gives you this and you'll be able to solve it when I show you, okay? All right, so here, electron volt QV is equal to half MV squared. What I'm doing there is basically, I have it explained, W equals QV, kinetic energy equals a half MV squared, work done equals the energy, so the two equal each other, that's all. You could do the same with MGH, okay? And force times displacement, all right? So that's your, that's where that equation comes from. Uh, basically this goes to show that electrons can be affected by a bar magnet, okay? And making them move up or down, okay? We touch more on that in magnets. All right. Yeah, Fleming's left and we'll come back to that. I'll do that when I go back over the, the magnets topic. All right, so electrons in the magnetic field. We have this equation, F equals BQV, which is magnetic flux times charge times voltage, okay? F equals MV squared over R from circular motion, okay? So force equals force, therefore MV squared over R equals BEV, okay? And that's just to find um, in the magnetic field when the, <coughs> excuse me, the electron is spinning, okay? So F equals BQV and F equals MV squared R, F equals F, so MV squared over R equals M, uh, BEV. Please remember that, it's a typo here by myself actually. Um, oh no, no, sorry, no, I'm getting confused myself. Yep, okay, all right. This equation, uh, let me see. Yeah, it comes up, can come up a bit, um, but not really. Uh, it's very rare that kind of these, this kind of thing will kind of really pop in on a modern physics question. Uses of a cathode ray tube. Let me see now, which is the most, the an ECG is kind of the main one now. Um, and not so much this anymore, but it used to be, but you'd still, it can be using computers and televisions. Okay. All right, to the maths. So, uh, if an electron is accelerating from rest through a voltage of 8,000 volts, so V equals 8,000 volts, find the electrical potential energy it loses. So we'll look for potential energy. And then we want to find kinetic energy and the speed. Okay. Now they do give in the, I got this from the book page 100 or page 333 question one. And in the exam, they give you the following anyway. And if they don't, they're in the log table. So you could just simply look them up unless they ask you to find them. 1.6, 10 to the minus 19 coulombs for the charge of an electron and the mass of an electron 9.1, 10 to the minus 31 kgs. So, all we simply do there for part one, look up the equation for potential energy. Well, it's MGH. We can't use that. We have mass. We can technically get that, but we don't have height. So clearly that's out. That equation isn't the equation we use. So what else can we do now? What else do we know about all the energies? Well, we know EP equals EK. Well, we can't get EK because we don't have V squared. So what else can we do? Energy equals energy. What did we say earlier? Work done equals EP, which also equals QV. We have our equation with our one missing value. W equals QV. You have to remember work done is in joules and therefore it's the same as potential energy. So therefore you should get for your work done when you sub in your two values, V, 8,000 and E. And also the reason this is volts, not V as in speed, that's capital V. Oh, that's meant to be a capital V. It doesn't look like it, but that's meant to be a capital V and that's meant to be a small V. Anyway, so we put in 8,000 times 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. 
and you should get one, one, okay, that's not working, no, 1.28 by 10 to the minus 15 joules. Okay, this pain has gotten worse. So that's your work done. So equals potential energy, okay? Now the second question is, what's the kinetic energy? Well, loss of potential is gain in kinetic, so therefore the maximum kinetic energy we're going to get is also going to be 1.28 by 10 to the minus 15. You see? Joules, this gives it in there, okay? So for part three, I'm gonna rub out the left hand side just because I need, I need the space, okay? So we have the first two parts now answered. The last part is what's the speed of the particle? Well, we can get that because we have kinetic energy. EK a half mv squared. So we need V. So V is going to equal to two times EK divided by M rooted. Fire in all your values and you should get an answer of 5.3 by 10 to the seven meters per second to my one. Okay, so there you go. Now, the next question is about conversions. So I'm not gonna show you the first three, they should be fairly straightforward. Go to your log tables, simple, page 46, I think. Um, but I am gonna show you the joules. So one joule, what is it? When well, you go to your log tables, what does the log table say? One EV, equals 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Well, if you rearrange that, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules equals one electron volt. So if I asked you, what does one joule equal? What are you gonna get? What are you gonna tell me? How are you gonna figure that out? So we know one electron volt is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules equals one electron volt. So one joule equals one divided by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules, joules, okay? And that should be a 10, okay? So one joule is equal to one divided by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 not joules, apologies, that should be electron volts there. Electron volts, EV, there you go. So one electron volt is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules, so one joule is one divided by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. So when you need to go from joules to electron volts, divide by the charge of an electron, which is what we did here. And when you're going from electron volts to joules, you just simply multiply by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. That's it. Okay, that's all you do. So I'm gonna rub that out, just give you a few answers so you can practice them. So one electron, so one joule should work out to be, what did I get there? When you divide one by 1 1.6, 6.25 by 10 to the 18 electron volts. So that's part four, part five. Oh my God, would you just, okay, that's, that's horrendous. That didn't, just didn't come out. So part five was two by 10. You should end up with uh, 12,000. Okay, so the pen has stopped working completely. There we go, 12,500 uh, electron volts and so forth. That's all you do, you divide and then go the other way, you multiply. Okay, so problem three, very straightforward. It's question seven. Um, what is the force of an electron? That should be of, four, sorry, force on an electron, apologies. Uh, traveling with a velocity of 2.1 by 10 to the six meters per second at right angles to a magnetic field of flux density. So put in all your values. Flux density B is 4.2 Teslas. Uh, velocity V is 2.1 by 10 to the six meters per second. Um, and we have charge Q 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. Where do we get that? It's the charge in an electron, okay? And our equation is simply going to be, what equation is missing one value? Simply F equals B 
QV. Sub in your three values and we should get 1.41 by 10 to the minus 12 and force is newtons. There you go. Problem four, uh, given that the charge on an electron is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, and the charge to mass ratio for the electron is 1.76 by 10 to the 11 coulombs per kg, find the mass. Okay, so we have the charge of an electron, or not E, Q, is 1.6, 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So they say charge to mass ratio for the electron is this. Okay, so what does that actually mean? So you basically have to form an equation from this. Now I know what it means, mass to charge ratio, okay? Or charge to mass ratio. But let's say you didn't. Look at the SI unit here. What's that? That is coulombs over kg. Well, what is coulombs? Coulombs is the charge. What is kg? It's the mass. Now what are we dealing with? An electron. So basically the charge of an electron Divide up by the mass of an electron. That's it. Okay? And when you do that, we get one point oops. One point seven six by ten to the eleven. That's what they gave us. And the question is find the mass. So therefore mass mass of an electron equals the charge of an electron divided by one point seven six by ten to the eleven. So the mass of an electron should be 9.09, 10 by 10 to the minus 31 kg, okay? 9.09 .09 by 10 to the minus 31 kgs. And there you go, okay? So that's it, um, nothing too difficult there. All right. So again, if you're caught with something like that, usually if they ask you, look at the, 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 my English escapes me, look at the SI unit and that usually tells you the equation that's been used, okay? All right, so the photoelectric effect. What is it? The photoelectric effect, again, is the definition you need to know, is the emission of electrons from the surface of a metal when the electromagnetic radiation of a suitable frequency falls upon it, okay? So the emission of electrons from the surface of a metal when electromagnetic radiation note of a suitable frequency. So not just any UV light. It has to be a specific frequency. Okay? This demonstration here, uh, let me see. Yeah. So know this. They could ask, how would you demonstrate? Okay? And so again, you have a UV lamp, you have a zinc plate, and all you simply say is set up as shown, charge the electroscope negatively, we shine UV light in the plate, the leaves collapse. Okay, so if you remember how we charge this from electricity, you bring a negative rod up, you tap it, the leaves collapse, you take it away, the whole thing is negative. We shine UV light on this and the whole thing collapses. Why? The UV light causes electrons to be emitted. So the electrons jump off and take the negative charge with them. Okay. Okay. So the structure of photocell. So for this, you can be asked to draw the photocell and it's fairly easy to draw. You don't need to draw this picture here, okay? Down here is a little bit better. This is all you need to draw, okay? So you've got your anode and you've got your photocathode. Why do we call it a photocathode? Photo meaning photons, okay? Cathode means it's obviously the cathode, all right? So the electrons are gonna go and jump from the photocathode to the anode, okay? And of course the tube is a vacuum. So what happens here, all right? is we have the battery set up. If you put, I think uh, the next picture is a little bit better, so I'm gonna roll up the next picture. So you have a galvanometer here, and when you connect the battery, right? The battery won't run. The reason being is the electrons can't jump here, okay? So we've gotta make that happen. So how do you do it? Well, this experiment, demonstrate the action of a photocell, okay? So again, you set it up as shown, okay? And all you simply say is use, okay, measure the distance from the light source to the photocathode, okay? Repeat for distance differences. So you increase, you start really close and push it away or start really far, bring it close, okay? And plot your graph. Now what you'll find is a straight line through the origin showing that the photocurrent is inversely proportional to the intensity of light. 
Okay? So it's inversely proportional to the intensity of light. So when there's good light, strong intensity, okay, we should see um, more electricity flowing. In other words, the distance gets further, the intensity gets less. That's why they're inverse. Okay. Um, right, for here, this is kind of just a lot of theory, stuff that won't really get asked, but it's kind of more to help you understand the equations that we're going to be using. So basically, you basically have everything has a definitive frequency called the threshold frequency, which we'll touch on in a second. Okay? If you don't reach the threshold frequency, the light will not move. Okay? Photo emission occurs, the number of electrons emitted per second is directly proportional to the intensity. Photo emission occurs, the number of electrons emitted per second does not depend. So the number that it, that it gets emitted has nothing to do with the frequency, it's to do with the intensity. Okay? All right? So once you get above the threshold frequency, they start jumping. Okay, but it doesn't mean if you keep increasing the threshold the, the frequency, they'll increase electrons per second. Okay, uh, the maximum velocity of electrons emitted increases the light intensity. Does da, da. and the last one, the work function of a metal is the minimum energy needed to remove the loosest electrons. Okay, so the threshold frequency is the frequency, the minimum frequency with which you'll need. Okay, in order for the electrons to start jumping, the work function is the minimum energy that's needed to move the loosest electrons, okay? So the electrons that are most likely to jump, the minimum energy they need, okay? So, do I have threshold frequency definition? Um, oh yeah, yeah, okay, sorry, apologies, I'm just checking over my notes there, did I skip something? Okay, um, so, Photon is basically just electromagnetic energy, okay? Um, so photons travel at the speed of light, all right? And the energy of photon E equals HF, Planck's constant being H, okay? And H is given to you in the log tables. The value is usually 6 by 6 by 10 to the minus 34 joules per second. Where does it get joules per second? Okay, that's the question. So try and find the answer, put it in the comments below if you can. Um, let me see what else. Oh yeah, here, so what's happening in, in this? So when the light, this is important, strikes the metal, all the energy from one photon is given to one electron, okay? So therefore, if it's at the work function, that electron will now have the energy to jump, okay? That's it, all right? The amount by which the energy of the photon exceeds the energy needed to move the electron appears as kinetic energy, okay? So it's usually kinetic energy that it appears as. Okay, so E equals HF can therefore be used to give us this equation, which is in the log tables as well. Energy of an incident photon equals the work function plus the kinetic energy. HF equals uh, the work function plus a half mv squared. Okay. All right, so think about it. What's happening? The energy, E, Okay, we're hitting the metal, so the energy is going to appear, as we said, kinetic. That's why it's kinetic energy. And we need the work function before anything can happen. So if you don't reach the work function, nothing will move. But if you do reach the work function, and that's going to cause the electrons to move. Okay, so that's why we add the two together. Okay. So the work function, also known as phi, PHI, okay. That's how I always pronounce it. I may be wrong, but... Somebody will probably pointed out that I've pronounced that wrong for years. Um, now, the next thing you need to know about is the threshold frequency. Okay? So, um, threshold frequency and the work function are given as followed. So, phi equals HF0. Okay? Now, what is happening here? Okay? Basically, it's the minimum amount of energy that you need. So how much energy you need? Well, it has to reach a frequency because we did say that the threshold frequency has to be reached, okay? Once you reach the threshold frequency, the everything will move, okay? And each photon carries a packet of energy of H, so the threshold frequency is just called F0. So if you're asked to find what's the frequency at which the electrons will move, we have to find that first. And then that ties into the work function, 
which then ties into the kinetic energy that's going to be thrown off, okay? Applications of these things, simply enough, um, automatic doors, uh, counting items and uh, conveyor belts, okay? Basically, they're the two easiest ones. Burglar alarms sometimes as well, okay? All right, so let's do a few questions. So problem five. Red light has a frequency of four by 10 to the 14 hertz. Find the energy of a photon of red light in joules. Okay, so, so this topic, um, all right, let me see. Do I want to write? Okay, so I'm not going to write all the values down the left hand side just because there's a lot of them. Um, but generally, you would. Okay, so what they gave us, what they give you in the exam, and if they don't, you can look it up in the log tables. But in this question in the book, page 339, they gave us H, I'm just going to write out uh, 6.6 .6 by 10 to the minus 34. I'm not going to write in the SI units because I just want to save space. They gave us obviously the speed of light, 3 by 10 to the 8. Uh, they gave us the charge of an electron. 1.6 10 to the minus 19 and they gave us the mass of an electron 9.9.1 by 10 to the minus 31 okay and then we have frequency of 4 by 10 to the 14 all right so find the energy of a photon of red light in joules okay so we need to find the energy of a photon go to the log tables and what do we have e equals hf do we have enough information here we do so we just fire that in and we should end up with two and you said four two point six four by ten to the minus 19 joules part two convert that to electron volts well what do we say one electron volt equals 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules so we therefore divide by 1.6. So therefore, E, so divide 2 point this, 2.64 by 10 to the minus 19 by the charge of an electron. Then we should end up with 1.65 electron volts. Okay. All right. Problem six then. The current now again, I'm going to use a lot of these values again. So the, the three values, I'm not going to keep writing them out. The three values I'm going to keep are obviously H, C, E, and M. Okay, they're the same in all these questions. So I'm not going to keep writing them out. I just wrote them out the first time. Okay, so they stay the same. So I'm going to use them in the other questions. All right. So the current in a photoelectric cell when illuminated by a monochromatic light source is two microamps. So current is I. 2 micro, convert that, 10 to the minus 6 amps. Uh, how many photons strike the photo, photo cathode per second? Assume all incident photons cause photo emission and all emitted electrons cross the cell. Okay. So, photons per second is the number of electrons emitted per second because one photon, if you remember from what we said earlier, one photon. we give its energy to one, one electron, okay? So therefore, um, the number of photons per second is equal to the number of electrons emitted per second, okay? What is current? Current, okay, is charge passing per second, okay? Q equals IT, I equals Q over T, so charge passing per second, okay? What is the charge here? Charge here is charge of one electron, okay? Yeah, one electron per time. What's our time? Our time is one second. So it's the charge of an electron, and not just charge of an electron, it's charge of an electron times the number of electrons, okay? Sorry, I got, I got confused there. I thought I missed in sec time, but they gave us time per second. So Q equals IT, I equals Q over T. What is the charge? It's the charge of an electron times the number of electrons divided by the time, which is a second. So therefore, our current here is going to be 1.6, 10 to the minus 19 times um, number of electrons, I'm just going to call it X, okay? 
and we have the current 2 by 10 to the 6, so therefore x, you should get x to equal 1.25 by 10 to the 13 photons. Okay, so what happened there? One photon is one electron. Well, what is the current? Current is charge, charge divided by time. We have the charge, it's the charge of each electron. Time is the number of each electron, okay? What is the time? The time is given to us as a second, so therefore current is equal to 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 times the number of electrons. Divide that across in the current, and there's your answer, okay? Problem seven, right. So when light of wavelength, 350 nanometers, okay, so this is lambda, 350 by 10 to the minus 9 meters, uh, falls in metal surface, the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons is 2 electron volts. Okay, what is the work function of the metal in joules? So we're looking for the work function. Okay, so the kinetic energy, E, equals 2 electron volts. So first we need to convert that to joules. How do we do it? Well, 1 electron volt equals 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So 2 electron volts equals 1.6 10 to the minus 19 times 2, which gives us 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we now have it in joules. Okay, and generally you want to convert your kinetic energy to joules anyway. All right, so we're looking for the work function. And again, like I said, don't forget, we have these three values. We have H, we have C, we have E, we have M. Okay, so we want to find the work function. E equals HF. No, but we could use this one. E, or not E, sorry, in the log tables it's. HF work function plus a half mv squared. Okay? HF equals E. So therefore E equals plus a half mv squared. We're trying to find the work function. So work function equals the energy minus a half mv squared. Oh, no, sorry, I made a mistake there. Apologies. Yep, I was wondering there. I said, hang on a minute. Um, we don't have V. That's my mistake. I made a mistake there. We do not have, sorry. We have the kinetic energy. Sorry, so, sorry, EK is what we have. I should have taken note of that. That's my own fault. I didn't label it as EK. I labeled it as E, and I ended up getting confused. So EK equals a half mv squared there we go yeah because the v we don't have a speed so that would make no sense all right so therefore hf is equal to the work function plus a half plus e okay so therefore the work function is equal to hf minus that okay and we have the way we have to find HF, so we have the wavelength, ah, okay, I have to find the frequency, there we go, so we're almost there guys, so we have, took a second there to think, we have E, we have H, I have to find this, how do I find that? Well, we have a wavelength, so is there any we can do with that? So if you go to your log tables, what you find, you find C equals F times lambda. You see? So this is how these questions go. Actually, it's good that I'm kind of catching myself out here. It just goes to show you that in the exams, um, these are kind of processes you'd have to make, okay? So you work down as far as you can. We realize we have H, we have E, we don't have F. How do I find F? Well, the wavelength was given to us, so we have to use that. And obviously, we're dealing with when light falls. Yeah, so light, so therefore, speed. We have the speed, so F equals c over lambda which should give us a frequency of 8.57
by 10 to the 14 hertz. There you go. So now we have frequency as well. All right. So we worked it down to the point where I had everything but F. I've now found F. You sub everything in and your work function should end up being 2.46 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. And there you go. So that, that question was a bit messy. Um, okay. And, and also, I hope don't make the mistake I made, label your values correctly on the left-hand side. I didn't label that EK, I labeled it E, and I got confused. Um, yeah, so just make sure you, you pay attention, you label them correctly. Um, now, you should end up copying that your, it doesn't make sense, um, but just in case. All right. So, problem eight. So let me see, we're almost there. So we have problem eight, and then I have a mock example for question. To do with you, and then we'll look at the last thing, and then we're done with this topic. So, problem eight radio station 2FM operates on a frequency of 92 megahertz. Okay, so frequency F, F equals 92 by 10 to the 6 hertz. Uh, what is the energy of a photon of electromagnetic radiation? So, we'll go for E. If the transmitter has a power, so P equals 2 by 10 to the 6 watts, how many photons are emitted per second? Okay. And again, remember, we also have these three, four values, 6.6, 3.10, 1.6, 9.1. Okay. So we have all those values as well. I just don't want to write them out because it's awkward enough with this pen. All right. So what do we need to find first? What is the energy of a photon? Well, E equals H. F, we have H, we have F, E equals, what did I get there? I got 6.072 by 10 to the minus 26 joules. Okay. So how many photons are emitted per second? Okay. If the transmitter is a power. Ah, what is power? Well, watts. Watts, another way for watts. Take this, you look at the log tables. Watts is joules, joules per second. Okay? So therefore, if we have 6.072 by 10 to the minus 26 joules, okay? And we're going to find out how many photons per second all right, so therefore what we do is we have to say, well, the total power is 2 by 10, my God, by 10 to the 6, okay? That's the total power, and we divide it by 6.072 by 10 to the minus 26, 26, okay? So if the total power that we have is 2 by 10 to the 6, okay? That's joules per second, you see? Joules for every second, how many joules per second, okay? And each photon is this. So each photon has 6.72, and we're told that two by 10 to the six joules every second is emitted, okay? Then therefore, to find out how many electrons, we divide the total number of joules per second by the charge and joules of each photon, and that should give us three point two nine by ten to thirty one photons okay so that was a bit tricky you have to remember power equals joules per second okay so therefore in one second two by ten to the six joules okay is the maximum amount passed and each photon has six by ten six point zero seven two by ten to twenty six joules of energy so you just divide one into the other so the last question on this topic is a mock paper from, actually, oh no, I didn't take down the year. Uh, so an electron is emitted from a cathode and accelerated through the potential difference of four kilovolts. So V equals four by 10 to the three volts. Okay, again, we have, again, I, I'll say it again, because just in case, we have all four of these values. Okay, I'm just not gonna write them out again, because I am incredibly lazy. And also this pen is horrendous. I have ordered a new pen, so, um, whenever it arrives. So how much energy does the electron gain is number one, okay? 
Uh, right, so how much energy does the electron gain? Well, what is energy? We've power. So energy equals the kinetic energy equals the potential energy. What else does it equal? Work done. Okay, so the energy gained, so the energy gained, I'm just going to call it EG, equals the work done, which equals QV. What are we dealing with? We're dealing with a charge of an electron, and we have the voltage of 4 by 10 to the 3, so therefore that should be 6.44 by 10 to the minus 66 16 joules. Okay, so the energy gained is equal to the work done, which is equal to charge by volts, okay, which is the charge of an electron, uh, six, 1.6 by 10 to minus 19 times the voltage, which was 4 by 10 to the 3, and there we have it. Okay, part two. No, oh, that's this. Work done equals, oh, sorry, uh, what is the speed of the electron? There we go. So what is the speed of the electron? So the electron is emitted, it accelerates through the potential difference. What's its speed? Well, we now know the energy gained. So what else is that? Energy gained. What do we say up here? What are all the energies? They are all the same. So therefore, what equation will give us everything bar one, including our V, Okay, so V equals the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by M, and we should end up with 3.8 by 10 to the 7 meters per second. And there you go. Okay, so what everyone forgets about these is energy equals energy equals energy. Work done equals energy gained equals um, potential energy equals kinetic energy. They're all linked. Okay, joules equals joules. So, X-rays. So this came up, it's been a while since it came up in an exam. No harm to go back over. What are X-rays? They are high frequency electromagnetic radiation produced when high energy electrons in the cathode ray to strike a metal target. Okay. Properties. Know these, they usually ask, if you know three of these, you should be fine. They usually ask for two if they ask for any at all. Um, okay. X-rays are high frequency. Look at this. High frequency, but low wavelength. Okay, so they're high frequency, low wavelength. All right. They are not deflected. They can penetrate materials and they can ionize what they can pass through. However, you need to know how to draw this. Last time this got asked, they asked people to draw it. The key things they want really are your cathode filament, okay, your anode with the target, and your screen. Okay, they're the three things, and of course, high voltage. Okay, there are the four things you have to kind of mention. Now, key as well, these are the electrons that hit the target and come out as X-rays. So that's similar to something else we recently had, isn't it? What else did we have earlier? Can you think, can you remember back? What did we have earlier? We had harmonic emission. What was it? It was that if we shine UV and heat up an object, we will get electrons out. Here, we're hitting electrons and getting X-rays out. Okay? So a lot of times what they'll say is, how is this an example of the opposite? Okay? And that's why. In one, we're hitting it with UV light and getting electrons. In the other, we're hitting it with electrons and getting UV radiation. Okay? That's the idea. That's why they're the opposite. So with thermonic, we, really, we, we heat it up. Okay? Oh, sorry, not thermonic. Oh, God, not thermonic. Um, photoelectric, apologies. My God. Um, I'm getting all confused there. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Not thermonic. Thermonic is heat. So, sorry. That the, the production of an X-ray is the opposite of a photoelectric law. Okay? Because photoelectric law, 
is we shine UV light and we emit electrons. In this, we hit it with electrons and we release UV light. They're the opposite. They go the opposite direction. The reaction is an equal but opposite reaction. I do apologize about the thermonic emission. I don't know why that. I got a, a brain fog moment there where the, the thermonic emission jumped into my head and, uh, and then I described it wrong and everything. Anyway, uh, so, so this is the opposite of the photoelectric effect. Okay, so photoelectric, if you remember, we shine UV light on a metal plate, electrons jump off. In this, we shine electrons onto the anode and we get UV light or UV radiation, not UV light, UV radiation. Okay, all right. So what happens? Um, high voltage accelerates the electrons, okay, towards the anode. All right, when they strike the metal target, the kinetic energy of the small is converted into X-rays and the rest is heat. So only a small amount gets converted into the X-rays, all right? Uses of X-rays, there are plenty, guys. Photograph of bones, check the damage to buildings, etc. And hazards, fairly self-explanatory, okay? So, all right, so that's kind of it, that's that topic. I do apologize about confusing the hell out of you there. Um, so yeah, X-rays are the opposite of the photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect is the opposite of X-rays. A reaction, equal opposite reaction. Okay, so that is topic. Uh, what topic was that? 28. Okay, so that's the topic of electron. Done. Uh, what I will do next is I will get and record topic 29, the atom, the nucleus, and radioactivity. Uh, the problem with a lot of people don't like about modern physics is, well, personally, because I'm very, very maths oriented, um, I find that the fact that it's just very, very theory heavy, pretty much all theory um, hard, because it's something where you just need to kind of learn off a lot of information, and I find that difficult. I find the maths of it not too difficult. I find the maths fairly straightforward. But I do find just the fact that it's a lot of theory can be difficult. Okay?